Hi everybody, uh, welcome to uh, another session of uh, Wing Chun Kun. Uh, before the snow comes, uh, I figure I try to do a few more videos outside. And uh, in this episode, we're going to concentrate on and talk about the, uh, the deceptiveness of the Bachanto. Okay, so um, for starters, right off the bat, the Pachando is a, a, a very short weapon. And um, because it's a short weapon, there's going to be a lot of traveling involved. I don't mean like, uh, you know, uh, getting on an airplane or uh, taking a bus or driving your car. I mean, like, it's, it's a short weapon and chances are... Uh, for starters, you're not going to be fighting Pachamto against Pachamto. That would be silly. It's like, you know, um, these tr traditionally are, are rebel weapons e made popular during the Red Bow era. Uh, being a rebel, you uh, kind of uh, um, study the same martial arts and come from the same place. So if there was somebody um, holding a bachamdo, uh, they should be also in your team. If they have bachamdo, you have a bachamdo. Um, it's not uh, wise to fight uh, like in the Ip Man movie, the bachamdo against bachamdo, because um, both parties will be uh, stabbed and cut simply because it's a short, it's a short weapon. Um, it's like a knife fight. And when there's a knife fight, the two people with the knife against each other, uh, both parties uh, is going to get stabbed. So um, these are more like, you know, weapons that you can hide, that you can put in your uh, sleeve, your boot, your whatever, and then you can deploy them very quickly and then conceal them again very quickly. So um, reach, although reach is, is a really big problem because they're so short, and because you can infiltrate the cities, the dark alleyways, uh, with these hiding in your, your clothing, um, what you're going to come across is people with staffs or maybe a sword. Uh, most likely is that you're going to uh, encounter someone with a staff. The uh, reason why these are so short is the uh, Wing Chun weapons. The Wing Chun are all short weapons, including your arms. And um, you can conceal them. You can go indoors with these weapons without being noticed. So if you get noticed, somebody could easily pick up a stick. Uh, they're usually, you know, street vendors, um, you know, a broom, a long broom stick. Uh, street vendors, they usually have a lot of sticks. Um, uh, back then in China, everybody put a uh, stick out to dry their laundry, which they still do today. Um, even in uh, like pretty urban areas, you, you, any places where they have um, residential, you see sticks sticking out of windows, you see stick everywhere, and they're hanging their laundry outside, uh, near the sidewalk actually, where people walk by and you would go out there and uh, where the sidewalk is and you would like hang your laundry there. It's kind of weird. It is like that today too. So sticks are plentiful, so a lot of times you, you, you encounter the Bachamdo would encounter people with a stick. So people with the stick and the Bachamdo is kind of common. So against a stick, let's say, a, a lot of traveling because first of all, you, you have to contact a, and establish a bridge. Uh, we talk about this a lot in Wing Chun and in all, you know, all kinds of Kung Fu is that um, you want to establish a bridge so that you can come in, okay? If you don't have a bridge, you can't just, just come in and walk in because you could walk in, be walking into a weapon. Uh, with the bridge, the bridge allows you to walk into your opponent via the bridge. I mean, that's what bridges are for. So, so to give you a general idea of, well, the, what is the most commonly used form that you see people doing uh, with the batamto? It's uh, usually the gan. Okay, I try to do it where the camera can see. So there's a lot of gan like this. So just to give you an introduction, if, if you do one gan, you need to do another gan, okay? So because they're going to hit you from this and they're going to hit you from the other side. If, 
if you block successfully block this side they're gonna they're gonna hit you from the reverse side so you need to be able to do your guns very fluently quickly and fluently so it's not this like a, it's not this and then stop and then it's not you know you, 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 you don't want to discontinue a move. A, a move's got to be fluid. It's got to be from left to right, from left to right. So now that you've gotten used to doing the gun, well, what is the next step, okay? Well, you, sometimes it's not so much a gun and then another gun, right? So the, the most useful way of doing uh, the gun is the, the gun in a tanda, okay? So we're going to do that gun like this. And after the gun is a tanda, okay? So here's a gun and then tanda. So you can gun this side and then tanda. And then you can gun this side and then this comes to a tan. And this comes to the da. All right, so you can see that the gun goes like this and you, you, you're basically, you're making a V shape. You're making a V shape and then this V shape is gonna catch their weapon which is going to lock it in at the strongest point of your weapon in the middle right here. So it's going to lock in the weapon and then that ensures you to become safe. Because when their weapon at this moment, the weapon is down the center, they're kind of trapped there momentarily and they can't go below and easily circle down to hit you in the stomach and they cannot easily come out and hit you in the head. So that's why the gun is the gun is most useful and obviously every move that we do we have to take a step especially with weapons short weapon against a longer weapon so I don't care what step you take but every move requires a step I'm not really going to be stepping here because we're just you know doing a, a video and I don't want the focusing system to go uh, not catch up to to me so uh, just to illustrate, if I'm doing a gun, or my, my, my gun, every time a gun is a move, every time a gun is an advance or, or a retreat. So what do you do after the gun? Well, it's the tan da. So it's tan da, this side. And then if it's gun this side here, it's the tan ta. Okay, now your gun doesn't have to be perfectly like this. Um, if, if there isn't really a weapon there, sometimes this weapon could be much lower. So your gun could be down here and this weapon could be up here. So this gun here, this weapon is up here. And then you, you don't even see this weapon. You see like, see this is, I, I put this here as a, a distance that you can see. So when I go gun like this, you can see that my my top sword is reaching this, and then my my bottom sword you you, you barely don't even see it. It's not in, a, in your line of sight, so it's down here like that. Okay, gone like this, and I, I switch legs now. I, my right leg now is in the front. I gone like this. So. So now if you're sparring with somebody or you're fighting with somebody, say knife against, uh, I mean, a bachanto against a staff, um, you're getting used to. So a few times uh, he attacks, I gun, okay? I gun their weapon away or whatever. Now, obviously this could be a, a threat and this is to protect my bottom half of my body. So sometimes I can, and if, if the weapon is really in the center, then I can catch the, the, the weapon in the center of my V. And if it doesn't need to be, this can be protecting the bottom half, and this could be either protecting or attacking. So th they get used to this this way, and I'll switch leg here now this way. They get used to this now. So notice this is something that's coming right in the center right in his line of view line of sight and this is this is the major major threat that he has to deal with move after move after move okay because after that I can do a tanda 
All right? So, so this is something that is really, uh, really uh, dangerous to, to this guy here. So he's learned to stay just inches away from my lead hand. So now he backs up a little bit as you're fighting and you know, and, and he's just staying an inch away because that is where you want to be. You want to stay just outside the range of your opponent. That way you can choose to attack him when you want to advance. Because if you stay out too much of a range, then well, you know, you can't touch him either. So you're going like this and then you're going like that. You know, you're going like this and you, he's staying just outside the range of, of, you, of your lead weapon. So, so he thinks he's fine, but what happens, well, what happens is, uh, you know, you got to be, be, be careful too, because, you know, sometimes when you want to get too close, okay, sometimes when you, you, you touch a bridge and you want to, you want to advance, and as soon as you touch the bridge, when you advance, what, what, what they do is they're going to deny you of the bridge. As you advance, they could easily move back at the same time. And using their hands, they're going to withdraw the bridge from, from you. And then at this moment in time, you, you're left with, um, uh, uh, you're left with uh, no bridge. And now you're lunging forward. Now you're uh, uncontrollably lunging forward because you wanted to reach their core. But they've denied you of the bridge. They withdraw the bridge. They're backing up. And then next thing you know, they go like this. And then they reestablish as they're moving backwards. They pull away the, the bridge from under you. And then they stab you again. So at this point now, you're lunging forward and you're seeing this staff coming back at you to stab you or sword or whatever and at this point you, you don't have too much time because you're lunging forward and they're thrusting forward so it's very very dangerous for you it's like 50 50 rolling a dice do or die because you, because you have to travel all this distance that you have no choice you have to you have to kind of establish a bridge and you try to lunge forward as fast as you can. So uh, if they deny you of the bridge by taking it away from you and then they're going to stab you with it right after, you're going closing that gap so quickly that even if you make contact with, with their weapon coming at you, there's very little time to, to deflect this, uh, this weapon of theirs. So going back to the... Uh, the gun, okay, so there's the time that, but now they stay just outside of your range, which is here, and they think that you know you're doing the gun, you don't get them because this is the most threatening sword there that's right in their line of view. But little do they know that when this is the extended range of your lead hand. Next thing you know, you come right from underneath and you completely destroy them with this hand from, from, from the bottom hand. The hand that they kind of ignored. The hand that you kind of think that, oh, you know, that's just the bottom protecting hand. The hand that, uh, that he, he thinks that it's only going to be there if he attacks you low. And then he thinks that you can't reach him because you, he's, you know, you think you can't reach him because he's right outside of your range. But little does he know that the bottom hand actually, see, I can just reach the tip. But the bottom hand is actually this much longer. See, that much longer. Uh, why is that? Because I've switched the lead hand. I made a switcheroo. The whole time I've been fighting in the beginning, the several exchange that I've been having, I switched it. I made him think that my rear hand, see my leg, my left leg is f out front right now. And I made him think that my rear hand is the front hand, which is actually, this is the rear hand. This is the short hand. And the whole time I've been fighting with the short hand like this, 
and like this, I've been fighting with the shorthand. So now I've lured him into this so-called safe area that he thinks he's at. And little do you know then when you really want to make contact, he's standing there and he thinks you cannot reach him because that is the most threatening thing that he sees constantly over and over again. This is your lead hand. And then you come up at a slice that's a 45 from bottom up. This is very, very hard. He, this is blind to his sight because it's not in his line of sight. He won't see this. It's coming from underneath. And it's very hard to block because it's not coming straight up. It's not coming straight down. It's not coming side. It's coming from bottom up that he can't see. And it's coming at a 45. So when you go like this and he just stays, he's going to go back a little bit. And he's just going to stay here thinking that, you know, right here is the safe spot. You know, because I could barely reach it. Next thing you know, he gets sliced right there. And, 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 and your rear hand now suddenly became the, the lead hand and it goes way past, way past this blade here and it goes way past that. And now you manage to, to reach him. So that is the deceptive nature of that move. It's a very common move. It's a very basic move. Once again, just to recap, the gan, the tan da, from your gan, your gan, your tan da, and um, luring your enemy back in, luring your enemy back in, making them think that this is your lead hand, you constantly go like this, and this is your lead hand, your gan, and your tan da, you know. Ah, then next thing you know, hey, I fooled you. This is my lead hand. I could always reach you. I lure you into my trap. The deceptive nature of Bacham Do. I hope you enjoy this session and um, have a nice day. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Thanks. Bye.